I'm Rochelle Aline in Tampa. For Josh and Nicole Goldstein, the journey to parenthood started in 2019. No vacations this year, or next year, or the next five years, okay. But they soon realized there was a problem. We had tried for a while, it wasn't working, so we thought something might be wrong. Testing revealed fertility issues caused by several medical procedures that Josh had undergone. When I was two or three months old, I had a hernia procedure and some of the scar tissue from the procedure caused a blockage. Um, and then uh, 2008, I had uh, testicular cancer. Data from the American Society for Reproductive Medicine shows that in up to 40% of cases of infertility, a male partner plays some role. But a quick Google search on the topic shows that much of the research and discussion centers mostly on female infertility. And in the beginning, we didn't tell anyone what was going on um, because we were navigating it. I mean, it was really scary. Um, we didn't know where to go. I had have, I've had friends that have gone through this before, m mostly female infertility. And it's a journey of isolation that the Chednowskis can relate to. You maybe feel like an outlier, which makes you feel like this journey will be impossible and that you can't talk to other people about that. The couple says they're still on their journey to parenthood almost a year after receiving devastating news. We were able to kind of come to a conclusion that I was a carrier of cystic fibrosis, which was the reason why I was unable to have children the, the normal way, I guess I can say. Makes you think as a man, you know, like, am I really the, the perception of a man, right? I can't even hypothetically reproduce like everyone else out here. So that was a tough pill to swallow. We do some male fertility procedures here like a... Dr. Jonathan Balin is a local urologist that specializes in male infertility. And he says much of the isolation that both couples initially faced can be traced back to how we as a society think about fertility and what it means to be a man. I think part of the stigma is that fertility is such a, a female-driven factor. It's almost their responsibility, which is completely a falsehood. This is a, a couple's thing where we go into it together as a partnership. There's so many men avoid doctors in general or just don't talk about their sexual function or fertility because it's a, it's a machismo thing. You're, you're, you're you know, trying to talk about their manhood. When it comes to the causes of male factor infertility, Dr. Balin tells us the range is wide, but the treatments often fall into three categories, lifestyle changes, surgery, or medication. When a patient comes in, it's kind of my job to identify what's causing this male factor fertility and can we identify it and can we reverse it or can we help correct it? But in order to get more men into offices like his, Dr. Balin adds that we all have to change our thinking. I think we have to rethink the concept of seeking help and seeking a provider or looking at professional advice. It's a mindset change that the Chednowskis say ultimately helped them address fertility issues and they're now moving forward with IVF. It feels so amazing. Like we, there was a long period of time we did not know if we could have children, so um, it's great. Teacher salary. <laughs> And for the Goldsteins, a fertility workup, surgery, and IVF helped them welcome baby Harper into the world in 2022. She started walking about two months ago, and so walking has progressed to speed walking, to almost running. Um, she has her hands in everything now. We've had to lock up lots of things. I feel like we cherish like every individual moment and still to this day, like, look at her, like, I can't believe you're here, that you're ours. 